Now, we've been discussing the Boolean connectives, which get their name from George Boole. Boole was born in Lincoln, England in 1815 to a family with quite modest means. His father was a shoemaker, but his father also had a very keen interest in the sciences of the day, and evidently this enthusiasm was passed on to George Boole. Boole the Younger was primarily self-taught. Uh, he taught himself math, including calculus, and he also taught himself to read classical languages, Greek and Latin, as well as uh, French, Italian, and German. This facility with European languages in his own day helped him immensely in his mathematical research, in part because there was such a big divide between mathematicians on the continent, continental Europe, and on the British Isles, but that's a subject for another day. Boole published quite a bit in mathematics before he ever turned to logic. He was a school teacher for many years before he was appointed to Queen's College Cork, which is now University College Cork. He taught there until 1864, when he was 49, when, regrettably, he walked in the rain for several miles to deliver a lecture, lectured in wet clothes, came down with pneumonia subsequently, and died. Now, Boole was the first logician to give a mathematical basis for formal logic. He did this mainly in two books, The Mathematical Analysis of Logic and The Laws of Thought. There's a ton to be said about these works, but we're not going to get into any detail here. I just want to give a general idea of how Boole's thinking works and what it contributed. While Boole's approach to logic is a bit different from the way we do things nowadays in a class like this one, it's still easily recognizable. For instance, take a variable x to represent a proposition, and we would say that the negation of that proposition is 1 minus x, and this is very recognizably the same as our truth table for negation using t's and f's instead of ones and zeros. And similarly, and can be treated as multiplication, so that it only gives us a value of one if both conjuncts have the value of one, and it gives us zero otherwise since we're multiplying by zero. Now, it wasn't until the 1930s that the applicability of Boole's logic to mechanical systems was recognized. It was first recognized by Claude Shannon, sometimes called the father of information theory. While Shannon was at MIT, he wrote a master's thesis on Boole's logic, and he noted its applicability to certain relay switching systems that were then in use in telephones. And from there, Boolean logic and computation really took off. If any of you have encountered already the logic gates that are used in computing, you'll know that they're operating basically on Boolean algebra. I think these are the things that I like so much about the story of Boole's life and why I find it so inspiring that this person from modest means managed to educate himself and then to produce work which wasn't recognized as broadly useful at the time, at least not in the way that we see it now, but ultimately gave a basis for the information revolution. And I would encourage you to think of this anytime someone asks about the applicability or practical use of this or that research program, I think it's always a fair answer to say, we don't know yet.